welcome to tonight's episode of Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel. And as always, I have a very special guest for you, Baron Mack, producer, cinematographer, all things entertainment. He'll be with us for the next 30 minutes, so stay with us. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Beyond Focus TV allows you to discuss contemporary topics affecting the Caribbean people on both the national and local level. The show features informed guests who offer insight, debate, and evaluate various issues. Beyond Focus TV builds on the station's mission to provide useful information to the Caribbean people in New York and abroad. Beyond Focus TV, where our viewing audience can get educated, informed, and empowered. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel. And like I said, I have a very special guest for you, Baron Mack. Welcome to the program. Well, I'm glad to be here. Very welcome. We, we love having people who are doing things in the community. Yes. You definitely are doing great things. Um, but before we get started, mm -hmm. you got you to go through my hot seat question, hot which seat. is who is. So tell us about you. Who is Baron Mack? Baron Mack. Well, thank you again, Lydia. Let's Welcome. start with that. Baron Mack is a brother born and raised in Brooklyn, always been in Brooklyn. Um, I am a father. I am a, a brother. In Christ, and I'm also a filmmaker, full-time filmmaker, and a person that loves what he does and loves to enjoy himself and have fun in doing it. Amazing, amazing. So let's kind of talk about the journey. Okay. What led up, because usually a lot of times we have these ideas, as, as a creative person myself, you know, we have ideas and you have it for years before it actually comes to life. So when did you kind of discover your passion for entertainment? Um, first of all, was my mother was a singer. So, um, and she was really good at it. So it was in the gene. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't sing, but I could she rap. She got in a different way, yeah. <laughs> so I could rap, and being a rapper, coming to my time, like in the 80s, remember, 70s, I was when rap was born. And then as time progressed, I started rapping. Fast forward, then I was like getting out of the street life a little bit, started rapping for the Lord. After I started rapping for the Lord, I started doing these videos because I was doing it by myself. Mm -hmm. And then I started to be creative and doing my own videos. And in the beginning, the videos are horrible, the lighting was bad, <laughs> but I was learning. I, was, I had broken computers, but I was determined. And I always liked um, film, mm -hmm. you know, watching movies growing up. So... That was my biggest thing, and all of a sudden, just came and was like, you know what? My wife was like, we was doing shows. Mm -hmm. and my wife, cause my wife said, yo, you know what? Uh, these rap gigs ain't paying you, but people keep calling you for these music videos, and that's when it started to spiral out of control. And then there you go, you have something else. Yeah. And having a strong person by your side is very important too, Definitely. because you'd be surprised, you know. Yes. A lot of time, the mastermind is not who you always see but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm big up to my wife. Her name is Tabitha McLean. She's the boss lady. Yeah, she's my biggest, um, she's my side. She's my right hand. She's my backbone. She makes sure I get it right, mm -hmm. hold it down. Um, you need those set of eyes. You need that person in your corner. And then, you know, we also have a, you know, my cousin who's Courtney Battles. She came from Texas. And she came in the filming. She does a lot of sets for these big productions. She learned it. Um, but again, this, that's my team and we've been rolling ever since. Exactly. Um, so kind of tell us about, you know, some of your, I know we talked about your earlier works in mm -hmm. terms of like the videos and I, I look back at some of my old stuff too and I'm like, I can't even look at it just between <laughs> the lighting, the hair, like certain things you'd be like, I can't do this. But what have you really learned from all of that and, and doing a lot of this yourself? Well, what have been like some of the key things that you you've really taken away? What I what I did take away is um I I went to school, I told people I'm learning backwards, you know. So the one thing I did learn is you need a community. You need we always say like when you have um, productions, look at the the credits at the end of the show. You see how many names are on there? Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of work, a lot of people to make this work look great. And that's one of the things I learned. You have to be able to play in the sandbox with other people. If True. you can't play in the sandbox, it's not going to come out right. You know, or you can be good, but you'll be broke up by the time at the end of the road. Can't 
try to do everything yourself. Some of the best leaders right. are the best delegators. Yes, definitely. And I understand, you know, like like I said, I was doing lighting, my camera. I was running in front of the camera. Then, you know, even when we go out, the, the equipment is heavy itself. You know, lugging a lot of this equipment. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the Especially day, back in the day, equipment. Yeah, we are there yeah, back in the day, and I'm I'm up to date with new technology, and that's still a lot of equipment. Mm -hmm. You know, so at the end of the day, and plus you get to learn different techniques and know how. I don't want to say cut corners, but I want to say be more efficient. There you go. I like that. Be more efficient. So that's how this is working to be. smarter. Right, and not harder. That's my motto too. So. Definitely. Absolutely. So then you've taken away a lot of those things, keeping up to date with that. Um, mm -hmm. What was your very first project that you've ever could say is, you know, your own? My own? Well, my first project was, um, I want to say Forever Freedom Fighter. I did a documentary on a gentleman who just passed away last year. He was, he was 96. Oh, wow. And his birthday is at the end of this month. And uh, he would be 97. And I took, I didn't take for granted that he was going to be here with us. I knew he was up there. And um, that was my project. And um, I did that, by, I want to say, in 92. No, no, not 92. I mean, 2017 or 18. Okay. And, um, but it was my first project. And I was inspired to do it from, from a friend of mine named Brian McGinnis, who we interviewed another legend, as a, we call her Queen Mother, Adelaide Sanford. And uh, that was super dope. So Reverend Oliver, you know, let me interview him. And um, he was part of the Civil Rights Movement with Martin Luther King. He um, documented over 100 cases of police brutality. He did so much for Alabama back in the day. And that... That was amazing. So that was my first project, which now led me to a new, my next project. Well, I have several, so. Of course, of <laughs> course, which we'll, we'll get into um, in the other segment. But that's good that you can actually, you know, feel good about that. And, and the fact that he passed, you know, and you got to document it before that. Yes. It's, it's like his legacy is still going to continue. Yes. And he saw it. That was that was a big one too. And what was his critique? What do you say? Oh, he loved it. You know, um, he was being promised that was going to happen. He used to be on This Is Us. This is it. Back in um, um, back in the day, that's an older show. It used to come on before football, and um, but a lot of people promised it, but I was able to do it, and then that was one of the joys of it. It is it's gotten great reaction. It's a big educational piece. Um, I think it's something historical. It's like one of the unsung heroes because there's so many of them, you know, so many stories. Like now we're starting to see documents, documentaries everywhere. Like you're an unsung hero, Lydia. So, you know, we'll be doing a documentary about, you um, know. One of these days, <laughs> right? You know. So that's, that's what great. it is. And that's, and that's important to give people their roses. Um, right. I'm a big fan of that. I'm like, try to give it to them. While, give them flowers while they're alive, you know, and let them see it and see their work and recognize them on that. So I think that's just kudos for you to having, you know, the the mindset to kind of put that together yes. and make that happen because it's, it's definitely not easy, um, especially with limited resources right. and all that good stuff. So but what we'll do, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk about the rest of the projects and some other good stuff that you have coming up. So. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. So, Baron, let's talk about some of the upcoming projects. 2022, there's a lot going on. I know you got some yes. sort of surprises in the bag. Yeah, I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but we like crazy, though. That's what's up. Yeah. Um, New York Christian Hip Hop, I'm working on a big movie for that. It's going to be, like, a lot of stories, documentaries on that. Um, 
Uh, it's a lot of Christian rappers. Christian rap is one of the biggest things in our community now. It's grown to where in New York, I felt like we was kind of like not getting the love. But I want to big up to one of my brothers who's been doing this for a long time. It's called Kingdom Choice Awards, Marcus Hall. And he's been holding down New York and putting, them on the, putting us on the map. And that's a, an award ceremony show, which is really dope. Um, he, because of COVID, I want to say he's on his 11th one, and we're going to Broadway. That's one big well, aspect. Congratulations. So I've, I know I work with him on that. Um, I work with um, Husky Productions mm -hmm. and Reentry Rocks, where they did uh, a movie about women uh, in prison being reformed, and they have their their entrepreneurs now. That is another dope project um, that's coming out uh, between my cousin Ify Benton and Joseph Grant. They have like movies. I'm, I'm on my IMDb Pro. I I went from one to like four, you know, like movies mm -hmm. on there. So there's a lot of stuff that's coming, and I'm just excited about it, you know. That, that's amazing. Um, and of course, from feeling excited, what else do you feel in terms of, you know, making all this happen? It's still balancing. You know, you do this full time. Yes. Yes. Oh, man. You know, I'm inspired. You know, like, again, I have, there's a lot of people. I want to pick up, like, Ray Lou. This guy, he does it. He works. He, he shoots his own stuff. And uh, he's a good friend of mine. You know, he's one of the guys that inspired me to get. Uh, one of the cameras that I uh, use now today. There's so many in the community. I don't like want to take all the credit for myself. Like I, I just did this. There's a lot mm -hmm. of us that collaborate. We, um, we're starting to build together. You know, I got a sister, Bridget Turner. She did a um, run crew. She got a movie coming out. So I, I, I give a lot of kudos to these people that because the tenacity, the inspiration, the drive. That's what it's all about. At the end of the day, I mean, like. You got to get it done. You have to get it done. You make a way out of no way. Out of no way. And, and, and we always talk about budget because, you know, one of the things about filmmaking, it requires a lot of money. You know, we Even always talk about Even the lowest that. budget is yeah, still so a budget. A budget. You know, because you need a PA, you know, a producer's assistant. You need somebody running around helping you out. You need another set of eyes. You need a first AD. You know, these are the things that, that's why I said I'm learning backwards. These are the people that I need in the camp because these are the people that help your film go much smoother, I want to say. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you need the cameraman. You need a director. You need a producer. You know, these are other people, the other parts in the, in the filmmaking, but you need a, a big team. You need the sound man. You know, and the editor, you know, uh, the editor's assistant. I mean, like, when I sit home and I be like, I wear all these hats. By the time I finish, I be you wore burn. out. <laughs> but at the end of the day, like I said, you get back up. Because you enjoy doing it, it's nothing to it. So you, fit, you just go back at it again. How is that transition for you going into the gospel rap side? Um, uh, now, now I'm a big... Uh, fan of it because I have so many brothers and sisters that are doing their thing in it. I'm a, I, I, I would consider I'm an OG, you know. I, I don't mind telling my age. I'm 50. You know what I'm don't saying? look at it. Congratulations. <laughs> well, thank you. You know, so at the end of the day, um, I support them, you know, and they be doing a lot of positive things. Again, I'm part of a, a coalition called G, uh, GFC, that's Good Fight Coalition. Mm -hmm. And we do, um, there's a bunch of Christian brothers. We do a lot of positive things for the community, you know. Uh, and we just continue to, you know, build. We did a coat drive, you know. Uh, we did a laptop giveaway, you know. We also did a small business. Uh, we call it Black Business Expo. And we be doing that at the end of this month. So we, you know, I'm a part of a lot of things that, you know, a lot of people asked me to be a part of and then I just got um, become a part of uh, Wrongfully Accused which is uh, another nonprofit that helped incarcerated people that was in wrongfully accused mm -hmm. so um, like I said I got a lot of friends when you get my age you and you do good work and you be good to people you become very popular with 
a lot of friends. Of course, absolutely. Um, and in terms of like, uh, because with the gospel rap, that's that's a huge thing. I know, like I, I do attend Christian Cultural Center, and they have that big CCC is like one of the. They have the gospel rap. They have the gospel rock. Um, <laughs> so they, are you affiliated? Is there a particular um, faith organization that you? So you know that's really funny, because I'm an ICB. I'm an international Christian brother. Mm -hmm. I did. That's part of my ministry. I was doing Christian rap. Um, there at CCC. Mm -hmm. So at the that's end where of I first day, got exposed to it. <laughs> you know. So at the end of the day, you know. Um, Big up to my brother Rodney Patterson. You know, he's doing big things with his family. But yeah, uh, that's that's where, you know, doing that for the, the brotherhood. Again, part of that, that ministry. Just love it. And it's so crazy because some people, if you love the art form of rap, you could still have a really dope beat and mm -hmm. still keep the lyrics positive that's all it is the same lyrical flow and the rhythm and all mm -hmm. that stuff and i try to tell people that i'm like it doesn't have to be because it's now christian content right that it's of any lesser value oh uh, no it, it's actually what has happened is it's called bars now they change the format of the i don't want to say change the format they just up the game it's the new way of doing things when you got bars. Okay, so, school me. <laughs> so, so now is, which we called metaphors back then. You know, in my time it was metaphors. Um, being that you have these bars, Christian rappers d today, equivalent to the Bible, the scripture, but real life, and they intertwine it in such a way that you get the scripture and you get the light the life uh, experience. Right. And, and if you're doing this with the spirit, you're going to feel it. Well, hold that thought. We're going to take a quick break. We'll pick up that in just a moment. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. So, Baron, you were saying right before the break, you know, if you're feeling this, if the spirit is really, if you're, and it moves you. Yes. There's some songs I hear, I'm like, I'm just, I'm like, that's it. You just know. Yes. Um, again, coming from that, like, my time, I came from block party to era. Um, two turntables and a mic, know how to rock the crowd. You know, that was the introduction into it so I took my art form what I learned from back in the street those days in the Christian hip hop you have a lot of rappers that do the same exact thing some a little different they have bands you know but again it's it's just really dope and now with the videos that's that's the that's the um, I want to say that's the bonus that's the plus the visuals actually now becoming the main thing now because Everybody can rap. I'm going to say this. I, in, in my honesty, I, I'm not saying everybody, but a lot of people can rap. And a lot of people are really good at it. Mm -hmm. But now, the creativity with the visual, which is like that beyond focus, you know what I'm saying? Got to get beyond. Got to get beyond the focus. So that's what brings you into, as an artist, you know, brings you into totality. You know, we can feel, see the energy, what direction you're going in, what it looks like, the aesthetics, the effects, you know, what you bring into the table. Is it a story? You know, what enlightenment, you know, you bring. Because you could do a lot, and I've done a lot with videos, so. Absolutely. So now, you know, where can people see some of your work? This is important. We want everybody at home, all these viewers, how could they log on and, and see some of the material? Well, you can go, I'm on YouTube as Baron Mac, that's B-A-R-O-N-M-A-K. Um, I post a lot on Instagram, again, Baron Mac, B-A-R-O-N-M-A-K, no C, 
Facebook. I'm on there as well. But if you also want to go to my website, which is Mizad, and I spell this, M-I-Z as in zebra, A-D, function, F-U-N-K-Z-I-O-N, dot com. You can see a lot of my work. That nobody tried to steal that on <laughs> GoDaddy, right? I know no, nobody, nobody tried, to tried to steal that. No, actually, that name brought me a house. <laughs> True story. That is hilarious. Yes. So um, yeah, you can go there. You can find me. Uh, you can also hit me up. You know, I'm, I'm very accessible. And people always say, are you busy? Yes, I'm always busy. Right. You know, uh, the yes, laptop. You know, is, my time is expensive. Yes. But. At the end of the day, the laptop is literally right beside me by the bed. That's how I be editing in my sleep. Like, got to get it done. It's like making the donuts. Got to make the donuts. I got to get it done. Out of all the different functions, producing, writing, editing, all that stuff, which one is the one that you kind of enjoy the most? You know, uh, I don't know. I think all of it. I, you know, when you, uh, I'm a junkie. I want to say that. Like, I have a lot of equipment. I love the equipment. I love building rigs for cameras. I love, I have a suitcase where I have my laptop in it. I love building that where I got all my hard drives. I can pack it up and go on the plane and edit. Mm -hmm. um, editing, I get full control of, of the project and bring out the creativity and mm -hmm. things of that mm -hmm. nature. Uh, sound, I get to enhance it, make it better, sound design, make your movie sound like something like uh, IMAX, you know, Avenger type. <laughs> <laughs> like, boom, you know, I get to do all yeah. that in the writing and just the energy with everybody, with the community, the, the people that you work with, you get to build with them and play in the sandbox because, again, it's a... It's a I just said that line today at work. I'm like... Play nice in the sandbox. Gotta play nice in the sandbox and, and and be willing to accept people's ideas and collaborate well, with them. Or make them feel heard. You know what it is? Even if um I notice with people, even if you may not use their idea, allowing them to feel heard mm -hmm. and a part of the process. Right. Well, people are part of the process. I, I don't exclude people out of the process like that. I mean, they're heard. Um, respectfully and you know we all got to make a decision which way we want to go but at the end of the day the project is a project and we got to get it done and we love doing it and that's why you say I'm literally a junkie at this I love it does your wife ever get tired of be like this is what you do this is all you do you on that laptop you got B&H <laughs> <laughs> no you know actually she enjoys it too she's part of the team so that's right you're you right. know at the end of the day we watch movies together I mean we sit down and we binge watched um, Scandal this past three weeks we binge watched and we was like yo Scandal was so dope like we saw it again you know when you see it on TV mm -hmm. it's one thing but when you can actually get a chance to see and be like watch it and rewind and be like yo I really don't like her in this this mm -hmm. episode oh yo what was they thinking about that oh how you could connect the dots and put it together analyze the and story it helps you with your writing too and see how you piece together because the whole point is to get the viewer to think about that right and that's right. when you know you've done your job right. And I want to also say, too, like, I always offer my, my services because I know that in the um, all-black channel and in, in the independent community as black filmmakers, we suffer because we don't have the help and we don't have the, um, the, uh, the people that know how to do, uh, do things behind the scenes that, to, to bring the project and make it more better or make it up to a standard because sometimes you get bad sound, bad picture, and I can understand these these filmmakers are struggling because they're doing it by themselves. Yo, reach out and, you know, spend a little money. I'm just going to be honest. Spend a little money. Ain't nobody going to break your back. Spend mm. a little money. Spend a little time. Make your project fire. You know, at the end of the day, we want to see a... I want to support everybody, regardless what the content is. I mean, you know, I have my thing, but at the end of the day, I want that visual and that sound to be to a, a standard. It's got to reach a standard. It does. And I don't want to say industry standard, 
but a good standard. Let's good say standard. a great standard. You know, like come on, we can do this. I I love it. I feel I feel excited. You know, it's going to be a lot of good stuff. Um, so everybody at home could check out the stuff on YouTube. Yes. Check you out on social. So so that's amazing. So Baron Mac, thank you so much for joining us here tonight. Thank you, Lydia. For it's having been me. it's been amazing, and we'll love to hear more about what you're doing. Um. In the next little while. Thank you so much. Always. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, you can send us an email at info at beyondfocusmedia.com. I'm your host, Lydia Patel. Thank you so much for joining us. And we'll be back again next week. Same time, same place. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Stay with us. Beyond Focus TV show wants and needs your feedback. Did we blunder? Please let us know so we can improve. Was the show helpful to you? Drop us a note so we can share the success with our staff members. Is there something you think we could do better? We welcome new ideas and new approaches to old ideas. Do you have a great suggestion? Let us know and we'll work on it. If you would like to share your comments anonymously, please send us an email at info at beyondfocusmedia.com. If you want to get in touch with the executive producer directly, send him an email at gene at beyondfocusmedia.com. We really look forward to hearing from you.